Hey friends, today I'm making this stunning balloon bouquet for a birthday party and it's got a fresh flower bouquet on the bottom with a stuffed clear bubble on top. And I wanna walk you through each element so you can make one of these too. The first thing we need to do is prepare our bubble balloons for stuffing. Now I'm using a 24 inch bubble balloon today and to get these to reach their full size, we have to do a little pre-stretching of the plastic so that they don't pop prematurely. To do that, I'm gonna hold the balloon between my two hands and firmly stretch the balloon across the center point. Rotate the balloon and stretch again. Continue rotating until you get all the way around the balloon having stretched all sides. And then I go back and I stretch every couple inches along the seam edge of the balloon as well. Once the bubble looks really wrinkly, then we can go ahead and move on to fully inflating that balloon to stretch it out even more. For all the balloon portions of today's project, I'm going to be using a hand pump, but you could break out an electric balloon inflator and that would work just as well. Once you've got it fully inflated, let the air out, and then the last preparation I like to make on these bubbles is to trim the nozzle down to about 2 inches in length. Out of the bag, these nozzles are really long, which can make stuffing them kind of difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that down, and then I'm going to take my scissors and cut one edge of that balloon nozzle a little shorter than the other, and that'll make it a lot easier to open that valve and get the balloon pump in. Side. I'll be filling my bubble balloon with nine five inch balloons that are split up between these three shades of pinks as well as this gold confetti. Now this confetti is a little larger than the hole in my funnel that I would usually use to stuff my bubble with. So I'm just going to take a handful of that confetti and stuff it directly into the nozzle of the bubble balloon, making sure I shake it down so that all the confetti is down in the body of the balloon and there isn't any remaining in the nozzle. Next we can start adding our five inch balloons and to make stuffing those inside the bubble easier I found that if I take a balloon stick and put that inside my 5 inch balloon, it's much easier to get that 5 inch balloon up into the nozzle of the bubble. Now you want to align these so that the nozzle of both balloons are sitting together and then I'm going to pull the balloon stick out of the latex, making sure I'm holding both balloons between my thumb and index finger. Then I'm going to use my hand pump and put two pumps of air inside that 5 inch balloon. I like this size because it gives it a nice spherical shape. To help it keep that shape, we want to tie the nozzle really close to the body of the balloon. So pull as much of the nozzle of that latex balloon outside the bubble and tie the knot super close to the body of the balloon. Then before you let go of that nozzle, take a pair of scissors and trim away all that excess nozzle. This will give our latex balloons a really clean look inside the bubble. Then just push that latex balloon deeper inside the bubble away from the nozzle portion and repeat these steps until you can't fit any more five inch balloons inside the bubble. At this point, you'll prep your next five inch balloon just like you have and get it inserted inside the bubble, but because there isn't any room to inflate it, we first need to put some air into the bubble itself. So take your hand pump, making sure the nozzle is in the bubble portion and not your latex balloon, and inflate it with several pumps of air. You'll begin to see the latex balloons inside the bubble start moving around, and once you have enough room to work with inside the bubble, you can stop inflating it. You are going to lose some air out of the bubble as you continue to inflate latex balloons and tie them, so don't worry about the size of the bubble balloon at this point. You just wanna give it enough air so you have room to finish adding the rest of the latex balloons. Once everything is stuffed inside the bubble, it'll look something like this. Now before we inflate that bubble for the last time, we want to prep an empty 260 balloon by stretching all the air out of it and tying a knot in the end because we'll use this to tie off the nozzle of our bubble in just a moment. Now it's just a matter of inflating this balloon for the final time until it gets to its full 24 inch size. Once you've got it filled, then just twist the nozzle around a couple times to hold the air inside. And then while you have that pinched in one hand, grab that empty 260, laying it across the twisted nozzle, pull one end of that 260 really taut and wrap it around the bubble a couple times. Then without letting go of those tails, hold that in place and stretch the other tail taut and wrap it in the other direction direction around the bubble as well. Then just tie this in a simple knot and the tension of that 260 around the nozzle is going to keep our bubble nicely inflated for quite a long time. 
attach the bubble to the base, I'll be using a balloon stick. So this is the cup portion that's a part of the balloon stick. I'm just going to slip this around the nozzle of the bubble and then wrap the tails of that 260 really tightly around it a couple times so that there isn't any give in this. We don't want the bubble to wobble in this cup or it'll look kind of tilted when we get to the final stage. If tying this tightly isn't enough, you can always add a couple glue dashes between the bubble and the underside of the cup and that'll hold everything nicely in place so it'll stand nice and tall on our base. Bubble bouquets like this can be used for all different kinds of parties, but today I'm using mine for a birthday party. So I've purchased these gold foil stickers, which I'll have linked in the description box below. But if you have a vinyl cutter, you could absolutely cut some custom vinyl letters with the name of your recipient, and that would be a beautiful touch on a bubble like this. Adhering vinyl to bubbles could be a video all in itself, so for today I'm just going to give you two quick tips. Make sure you're very aware of where on the bubble you're placing them, so watch the seam of your bubble to make sure you're putting it on nice and square, and then as you apply your sticker, always start from the center and work your way out to the edges so you reduce your risk of bubbles or wrinkles in your sticker. The base of my design is a 4 inch white gift box that I picked up at my local craft store and I'll be filling that with this grocery store floral bouquet and I picked this because it's my sister's favorite flowers in this but you could fill the box with anything you like that could be silk flowers, that could be candies, that could be small gifts but to keep everything in place I'm going to be using a little bit of floral foam. Now because I'm using fresh flowers I need to use wet floral foam. If you buy the dry floral foam it's not going to give any water to your flowers. We want the foam to be a nice snug fit inside the box, so I'm going to hold the foam above the box and make a mark with my knife right where the edge will be before I go ahead and cut that piece loose. Then we need to soak the floral foam in some water, so I've prepared a bowl with the floral food that came with my bouquet already mixed in, and we'll just set this aside for a couple minutes and allow it to fully soak up all that water, and in the meantime, we can waterproof the inside of our box. So I'm going to line this with a little bit of clear acetate, which you can find in the gift wrap section of your local store. I'm going to cut a square out of this that's a little bit bigger than my box and then into the very center of that I'm going to set my pre-soaked floral foam, pick up the edges of the acetate and slowly drop it down inside the center of the box and this will fold it all up nicely and I don't have to worry about any gaps in the plastic. Then I'm going to trim away any acetate that's above the edge of the box with a pair of scissors and that way you won't see any of this plastic once we get all our flowers in place. Next I'm going to take a 12 inch balloon stick and seat it right in the center of my floral foam making sure it's nice and square. And you kind of want to get this in the first go. If you try and pull this out and put it in again it's going to create holes in the floral foam and it'll be less likely to stand up straight. So do your best to get it on the first go. And this is what we'll attach our bubble to. Now the distance between the top of this balloon stick and the edge of the box is all the space we have to put our flowers in. So as I layer in all my flowers I want to keep that height really low and I want the flowers to be pointing out more than up because that bubble is going to block the top view of this bouquet. So do your best to layer your flowers around, making sure you don't put any large flowers on any of the sides of the box. Focus them in the corners because we're going to be adding ribbon along those sides and as you can see here I had to move some of my flowers around because I didn't do that. Now we can bring the bubble and the base together, and because we have words on the bubble, I want to orient that so that it's facing one of the corners on the box because there won't be any ribbon there. So go ahead and just slide the cup and the balloon stick together, seating them nice and tightly, and if your balloon bubble wobbles a little bit, you can always add a few glue dashes to secure that in place. To accent the design and add a little bit more stability to my bubble, I'm going to string some 1 inch wide sheer ribbon from the box up over the top of the bubble and then back down to the box. Now I need two of these and I just drape the ribbon up over the top of the entire arrangement to get the general length that I needed. So once I've got two of those cut, I'm going to take one of my ribbons and put a glue dash on the very end of that and stick it on the inside of my white box making sure it's centered on the side. Then I'm going to pull the end of that ribbon up over the top of the entire arrangement making sure I hold it right at the center point of my bubble and then bring it back down to the opposite side. I'm going to put one more glue dash on this ribbon and cut away any remaining tail that I don't need. Then just stick it on the inside of the box just like we did on the first side and then repeat this with your second ribbon in the same way. Once you've got both ribbons secured to the box and they cross over the very top of the balloon, we want to help secure the top ribbon in place so it doesn't shimmy off the balloon. So I'm going to put one glue dash right between those two ribbons across the very center point of my balloon and that'll hold everything in place. 
to camouflage the balloon cup, I've trimmed away any remaining 260 balloon tails, and on top of it, I'm going to add a simple bow in coordinating ribbon. And now we can add the final embellishments to this project. So I'm going to bring some pink and gold ribbon down onto the box, and I'm just going to secure that in place with a couple of glue dashes. The base is also a great place to add some custom vinyl messaging if you didn't want to put those up on the bubble. The most important thing to remember is to bring elements down to the base that you have up above so it all looks nice and cohesive. There are so many different ways you can customize this setup for whatever party or event you're planning. If you found these tips helpful, boop that like button so YouTube can share these with other people. Until the next time, remember to stay creative everybody!